Hello and welcome to another pocket process video. If you are new to my channel, I make mostly 12 by 12 scrapbook process videos, but once a month I create a pocket page that captures the details of one week of our lives that month. So if you want to see all of my pocket pages and the process videos that go along with them, there's a playlist in the cards for this video. But right now I am jumping in halfway done because this is part two. Uh, the video that should be on my channel right before this and it will be linked in the playlist if it's not uh, It in that one I did the first page and in this one I'm going to be finishing up the second half of this page and also working on an add-on like a little insert for this spread as well so I had this really adorable cute cat card that I definitely wanted to use and so I used it to document this little meme that my husband texted me in the middle of the day one, one day this week. We have two, we have four cats in total, but two of them are known to be pretty pukey. So <laughs> that is a sight around our house quite often. My mother-in-law dyed her hair purple. Uh, purple is her favorite color and she's also involved in epilepsy awareness and so which for which the color is purple so she colored her hair purple and I thought that that card it's a little bit of a pinky purple but it I thought it really worked with her, her color scheme that she had going on there that was just a screen grab from a FaceTime meeting that we had with her a little a little chat so I just lined the vertical lines on that page with a brown marker because brown is sort of the color that I'm using. I also outlined the meme with brown because uh, brown seems to be my neutral for this page instead of black, although there is black on the page as well. So I would like to put a little bit of something else on this page and I think what I'll do is make a little title. So I am going to grab my letter stamps and I have, I keep them in a little clear container, but what I did was I just grabbed my smaller ones because I knew that I would be needing to use fairly small letters to stamp in the area that I wanted to stamp. So I would like to spell out purple hair. And so I grabbed my gorgeous grape ink from Stampin' Up and, I am, and I'm also going to use my Hazel Alphabet stamp set from Ellie's Studio. And I'm just going to stamp out the word hair first. And I'm actually going to curve this word around her head. And so I'm starting in the center, which is the A or center-ish, which is A and I. And then I'll put the H and the R on afterwards. So you'll see me do the R right there. And then we'll add the H so that it just curves around the curvature of the top of her head. And that just accentuates that I am talking about her hair. And I think that it adds a little bit of dynamic energy when you curve your words. And that's one of the benefits of using letter stamps is that you can stamp them wherever you like. So you might as well go all in and uh, curve around a shape. And I really love how using the purple ink just pulls in the whole theme. Basically, every single thing about this card is, is purple from the background pattern to her hair to her outfit. And uh, even, even her walls are purple, although she happens to be in the one room that is green in her house. Her kitchen is purple and her bathroom is purple. <laughs> So, and the green actually provides a really nice contrast with the purple. So it works, it works very, very well. I love how that mint green looks on the purple background. So that was a nice, happy little accident as well. So now moving on to the card right beside that one, we have the Mario. Oh, I'll show you this one first. But next we have the Mario photo and... I'm not sure if I'm going to do anything with this. It's all of the Lush products that I bought from the Mario line and I posed in with it uh, a couple of Amiibos. And I do, I do have the Princess Peach Amiibo. I just forgot about her for this particular part of the photo shoot. I took another photo later on and, and put the Peach uh, Amiibo in there too. But uh, this is the one that I printed up for my Project Life. So I think I've decided to just leave that photo as it is. It kind of speaks for itself. 
And I'm going to move on and do the 4x6 card that goes right below those two. And it, it it's going to feature another flip. So I made one of these flips in the other video before this one. But basically, I take one of those Kelly Perky or Paper Person 6x8 uh, papers and I score it at the halfway point so that I have a basically a tented 4x6 card that flips up and then I put a photo on the outside of it and a photo on the inside of it and because those papers are double sided with lines on the back I end up with a lined card or part ab above the inside photo that allows me to do some journaling. So this works absolutely perfectly. I love using these cards for this purpose. And so I'm just talking about the the little outing there because I um, I was live streaming with my patrons for this one. So we went to, this was an event called Burger Week and we went to a pub we had never been to before and ordered a gourmet burger and a part of the proceeds goes to the food bank here for burger week and so it was it was called all that in a bag of chips and it was basically a burger that had chips and chip dip on it as well as some other goodies i think there was bacon and onions and mushrooms or i don't know there was a lot of, <laughs> a lot on it it was a it was a party in your mouth so I feel like I don't need to use that much space for journaling. So I'm going to divide this top section into two by uh, kind of leaving the lines that are on the back side of that paper on the one side. And then the other half I will cover up with a Project Life card from the paper person kit that I get each month. So I think I'll put it on this side and I felt like the green side of this was a little bit too intense. So I'm going to use the other side, <clears throat> which is basically the same pattern. It has all these phrases that says eight here slash so happy over and over again. And <clears throat> I really like how that looks and it's relevant to the eating out theme. I'm just looking through my food themed stamps and there's some beer on here. And because we were at a pub, I thought that that might work. So I'm just looking at all of the options here. And most of these are paper person stamps. This one that I just stamped that said trying a new place is from 2019 when her shop was called Kelly Perky Shop. And it was called Eating Out. So trying a new place and it has a, a little geotag on it. So I thought that was pretty cool. I love geotags. I know they're not popular anymore, but I really, really love to use them for anything about going out places. Basically anything other than home, I will use geotags on because I think they're just perfect little embellishments that uh, they, they're meaningful, right? Like they kind of signify going out. Now, from the, what is this one called? A food scene stamp set, which is from the paper person shop. I'm going to stamp this one that says local dish and I'm stamping it in a navy green color. It's called Evening Evergreen and I don't think navy green is a thing. It's navy blue, but, but this is a, I guess maybe a hunter green is what I should have said there. Uh, so it says local dish and it has a fork and a knife and I think it's super cute. So I stamped that there just to break up some of the writing. There's an awful lot of text on this card between the designs over on the left, which are all text-based designs, and then the writing that I'm doing here. It says for Burger, Burger Week, we tried a new-to-us pub, mostly because it was one of the few open on a Sunday evening. The All That and a Bag of Chips burger had chip dip, chips, bacon, and fried onions and cheese. Yum yum. Fries were amazing. And I'm just journaling that with my Sharpie pen which is different than a Sharpie marker. A Sharpie marker will bleed if you use it on regular paper because it's designed for slick surfaces. So uh, make sure that you're using the proper marker for your task. <clears throat> it can be confusing when the same brand makes multiple kinds of markers. So I always try to clarify that it's a Sharpie pen that I'm using. 
Now these are my Clean Color Real Brush Markers by Zig, which I used in the previous video. And I just selected a shade of green, it's like a sage green there, that coordinates with some of the sage greens that are elsewhere in the project. I'm just showing my case there because my patrons were interested. It's just a, a pencil case from Amazon. And now I would love to stamp this beer stamp from the food scene stamp set from Paper Person. And I'm just reaching for some scraps and I couldn't find any craft scraps. So I had to grab a full sheet of paper here. And this is just craft paper from my stash. It could be Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake. I'm looking at it right now and I don't think it is Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake, although I did stamp it with Stampin' Up! Crumb Cake ink. And that gives me a nice brown tone on tone look and then I had just put those markers away when now I'm taking them back out again because I'm going to actually color in the beer here. And so I'm just going to look for a couple of different shades of brown so that my beer isn't exactly the same because we've got a bottle of beer and we have a glass of beer. So it's gonna take me a few minutes here to figure out the right colors because I'd like the bottle to be a little bit darker than the poured beer in a, in a glass. And then I'm also going to need to grab a color for the foam on top of the beer. So I'm doing the label and the foam in that shade and then this other shade. And of course, it, these markers look different on craft paper than they do on my little swatch sample card that you saw me referring to because it's craft. <laughs> so I'm looking for potentially, I'm looking in my oranges as well as in my browns because some of the oranges really do read as brown. And then once you put them on a craft paper, they look even more browny. <clears throat> So there's my swatch card and I just downloaded that from online. It could have been free or it could have been from an Etsy shop. I can't quite remember. I, I made it quite some time ago. So I finally settled on a color and it's this one. I don't know which color it is, but I like how orangey it looks. Like a nice amber beer and then I'm going to color in this label on the beer bottle green and I chose green because one of our local beers from our not a microbrewery but one of the big breweries around here their beer is in a green has a green label so there we go and I could have cut these out individually but I decided to cut them out as a little pair and I think that that will work better on the photo because I'm putting it on a fairly busy photo with some like designs on Scott's shirt there. I'm just going to go in a little bit closer to the edge. You can always take off a little bit more, but you can't put on any more if you, if you, if you trimmed it down too far. So I like to err on the side of leaving a little bit more of a border than I need and I can always go in and trim it down more. So there we go. I do feel like that little stamped image is kind of getting lost. So I'm going to go back and add a little something to that in a, in a little bit. I'm just trying to decide what to do here. I was, I was thinking about using this journaling piece here for journaling to go along with the Mario photo, but I think I don't need to journal about the Mario photo. So I'm just going to put my planner right here. I wasn't exactly planning to I, I I just printed up this photo as an option for potentially scrapbooking my journal my planner but I had it and I had some space so I thought I'd do it it says I'm still loving my Hobonichi cousin the week view is like my bible I refer to it all days every day the month view is my meal planning and expenses and the daily view journaling and more so I like the idea of documenting how I'm using my journal just by or my planner just by having that snapshot of how a week looks and just a little description of how I'm using it because I'm pretty flexible in how I use my planners and so I might use it differently later on in the year and that might be kind of fun to go back and think about how it's changed how I've used it over the years. Now these are two stamp sets that I also thought about using on this page. 
uh, and I'm not sure if I did or not. So we'll see, I guess. On this one, I decided to do some journaling right on the photo. So I wrote, I made a card and then I wrote underneath, actually, I made several. And what I thought I might do is play on the angling of this photo. So the, the, the card is at a funny angle on the photo. And so I thought maybe I could run some strips of washi tape that play up on the angle of the card. And it also covers over some of the grid map that is kind of ugly and not so nice or interesting for my storytelling purposes. So I just took two thin pieces of washi. These are probably washi tapes from the Gingham Garden collection that I just purchased not too long ago. And now this is going to be a filler card. So I'm going to take this stamp set here, which is called Crafty by Paper Person. And it has a seal and it looks, it says late night crafting and it has a, a pair of scissors on it. And I mean, it was late night for me. It was maybe eight o'clock at night or something when I made those cards. I also have the Crop and Create card, uh, stamp set out there, which I got from the Crop and Create that I went to in March, but I didn't end up using that. So here's how this page looks. I had already done the Mario Kart uh, 4x6 card that's up in the top right hand corner, and I had also already done the, the flip up photo that's up in the top center, uh, 4x6 piece as well. So that was in the previous video. So if you're watching this one, make sure you watch the video from before. And I, I'm just including this. I don't always include putting it into pockets, but when I do, I always get a few comments of people who appreciate that. So if I have the time, I like to show the pockets going into place or the cards going into place in the pockets, just because it's uh, sometimes, you know, this sort of thing happens. And I just want to normalize <laughs> the, 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 experience of having your cards not not fit because they sometimes don't <laughs> and so as you can see I'm really struggling to get this one in there but I didn't have to trim it down so there we go and I have poor visual spatial skills so I have to kind of flip it back and forth and back and forth and even then sometimes I make mistakes oh something was was not sticking on that other page so we'll put that there. I'm just double checking. Another thing I want to normalize is that it's it's okay if you need to check these uh, to get them in the right spots. Uh, there we go. So now all that I have left to do are add the flippity flaps. And again, these are pocket, what are they called? Uh, pocket flips from Simple Stories Snap. So this is how this page looks. And now finally, I'm just going to throw together a little add-in, a, a little insert. I received this postcard from the mom of my international student. I'm just showing the ink. I, th I think she might've used a fountain pen. It's really pretty penmanship and really pretty ink. So I'm including that there. And I'm not gonna put anything behind that so that you'll be able to see both sides of it. So I'm just using this full template to scrapbook a half of a, like an insert that's gonna be basically a half size design A. So I have a whole package of these from Becky Higgins. They're basically a half sheet of a design A. You could also just take a design A and cut it down, but then you're gonna have some waste, although you can use that waste for different projects and stuff but I do enough of these that it was worthwhile for me to buy the, to buy the package of them. So I just have a drink here from Scott. He likes to mix drinks, but we don't actually drink all that often. So uh, I get my drinks very watered down <laughs> and that is a Kai Perinia if you're interested. 
we discovered it in the Dominican Republic, and he's been making them ever since. Although mine is mostly lime juice with sugar, which is really yummy and delicious. <laughs> so I have this little data card here, and it is from Paper Person, and she's been including these cards every month, and I really love it. There's a place for you, it says March, and then it says Leaving Behind, Looking Forward, Top Priority, Something New and Small Things, and I've checked off Looking Forward. My journaling here says, the great thing about March is that winter is almost over, glimpses of spring, boots packed away. And then there's a little place that says Out Like a Lamb, So Many Birthdays, Spring Break Already and Feeling Lucky. I clicked off uh, Out Like a Lamb. And then you can rate your physical health on a 10-point scale, your mental health on a 10-point scale. Luck is on my side, never, rarely, sometimes, always. A place to put especially noteworthy. And I wrote Breakup slash Annabelle joined field hockey. And then overall, I'd give this month. And I rated it as half. So it's uh, two and a half stars out of five because we had some hard things happen this month. And uh, yeah, there was more hard things to come. Little did I know, <laughs> but we're doing okay. So we have that. There's my data card all completed. And now the the bright card beside it is going to be a filler card. So I'm just going to skip that. And I'm just having a look, I'm reviewing my month, right? Because this card, the red one is another data card from paper person. It says welcome to March, a seemingly endless month. And so I'm going to stamp a roller date stamp. It says the 7th of April, 2023. And I'm not sure why I chose that. As the date, I, I might have made a mistake there. Anyhow, uh, my my journaling. Oh, because that's when I am journaling it. Yes, that's the the current day that you're seeing me writing this was April seventh, twenty twenty three, and there's a space for five different stories or or lines of things that happened. So on one, I put snowstorm, school canceled, survivor started. On two, I've got Sunnyside Receipt Stress and Crop and Create Moncton. On three, I have March Break and the Oscars. I got sick with a cold. On four, I have I have um, just a private personal thing. Um, uh, and Liv and Sophie sleep over at Jen's. And on five, I have Eating, Freezer Meals, and Tears of the Kingdom gameplay was released. I wasn't playing the game, but it was released and I got to watch it. So as you can see, I'm just referring back and forth to my to my uh, my planner and this is where keeping a really detailed planner comes in super handy the way that I use my planner is I actually um, like I plan out my my week I, do, I don't write in it until the week comes and I plan out all everything that's in our schedule and everything that I know that I have to do and so those things are kind of structured all ahead of time on my week and then as I live through the week I then document some of the things that I did so I might not plan to scrapbook but if I do scrapbook I'll write that in on the spot on the day wherever there's room and similar things like, you know, maybe I, you know, notice, oh, for example, like the Nintendo made a trailer about Tears of the Kingdom. So I'll write down, you know, like watched Tears of the Kingdom trailer, because that's an exciting thing that I know I might want to document. So I kind of use it as uh, as a backup timeline for my documenting, whether it's in Project Life or if it's in my scrapbook, I noticed that I had not <laughs> marked off all of the things that I had done that week. So I just had to kind of mark off my tracker. So there is another tracker card here or a data card. I call, I call these data cards. It's also from Paper Person. It's blue and it says right now. And it's a place for you to put what you're watching or listening or reading or playing or exploring. And so I put watching and I'm going to list some of the things that we're watching. So it says Survivor, Bob's Burgers, The Simpsons, Tears of the Kingdom, Gameplay Analysis, and Stephen Colbert. Then I'm going to add a roller date stamp and I don't fill it up and it doesn't need to be filled up. I'm going to add a roller date stamp at some point here that says the 26th of March, 2023. I'm filling out 
the stars and filling them all in with blue marker because it was a good, you know, all of those things are good and I was enjoying them. So now I have a little space underneath of those stars that I'm going to fill in with this icon tab stamp set from Ellie Studio. And there's a little tiny uh, old fashioned looking television here. I just stamped it in Pacific Point ink from Stampin' Up because it's blue and I like that color. And I am going to end up cut it, covering this over with something different. But for now, I'm just going to put it there. And now I have these other cards that I want to fill in as well. So I'm using this insert as a good opportunity to just capture some data from the month of March. So another one of those paper person cards has current favorites. Under TV show, I put lost, movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. I didn't, I just left book blank because I'm not reading a book right now. I don't have a favorite. Song is Save Me, Dave Matthews Band. I don't know why that was just like stuck in my head that week that I was doing that, that, uh, that layout. Food or drink, I've got Kai Perinias and place is Hyrule because I've been spending a lot of time relaxing uh, in my Breath of the Wild game as I anticipate the release of Tears of the Kingdom, which is the sequel to that one. And action, my favorite action is scrapbooking 12 by 12 these days, baby. I love that. I am all about the 12 by 12 pages. <laughs> Even as I do the pocket pages, I'm acknowledging that really 12 by 12 is my jam. I do really love the pocket pages, but they're no 12 by 12, that's for sure. So I have this really cute patterned card with these uh, floral designs on them. I'm pretty sure it's from Paper Person and I just really love it. So I'm just going to add a really bold outline. I'm using my brush pen from, uh, I think it's a Faber-Castell pit pen with a brush tip that gives a more bold outline than my normal outlining. And I am going to add something else to that card as well. But here I'm just thinking about, I've got another data card and it feels like there's a lot of data on this page. So I'm just kind of thinking about, am I going to fill this in or am I not? Then I'm going to go through these cards and immediately see this one with mail on it. I just love those illustrations. And so I decided, yep, I'm going to add another filler card which is fine. I'm just flipping through to see if there's anything else that kind of stands out at me, but I really like that filler card. I grabbed this little tray that I keep some rubber pieces in because I thought I might, I wanted something to go in the center of this floral piece and this bold rubber piece with the, with the really bright blue background and the rainbow with the clouds on it. I just feel like that's perfect. It also pulls in some of the color for some of the color scheme that I wanted to pull in from the Mario photo shoot. So I've been mindful of that this whole time and I spoke about it in the last process video, but this whole time I'm just mindful that the that Mario photo has a lot of red and yellow and and blue, so basically like primary colors. And so I'm trying to pull in primary colors in various places, which is why I chose this rainbow peep this rainbow card in particular and uh, also why I chose that rubber piece for there. I'm just doing a little bit of shifting around here. I think the postcard also is nice in that it pulls in some reds and blues and greens and yellows from that same kind of Mario photo shoot even though it's a different it's more of a of a maybe a distressed look. It's warmer. It's a warmer color scheme. So I think I'm done, but I'm actually going to add something and I'm curious to see if I added it now while the camera was rolling or if I added it afterwards. So I'm just kind of showing you how this page looks, how the insert looks relative to the others. I like how it picks up on the different colors. And as I kind of flip through, it looks like, oh, I did come back. <laughs> I remembered that I was putting these gold stars in various places on the other side. So I decided to add, it's actually, I was going to add it to the outside. And then I realized it's not going to really stick very well there. So I used some Tombow Mono Multi -ad Adhesive and I'm going to put that star right there. I'm just going to look around and see if there are any other places that could use a little star 
to use these up and also to have an element that repeats in various places on the page because I had already used these a few times on the other on the other video. I did want another one over here on this side of the page so I'm just adding one here. We'll add one down here by the beer and that actually helps to bring that little die cut piece, the little fussy cut piece, uh, bring more attention to it. I thought about putting one there, but I decided not to. It could, it, it would be fine there, but I just felt like there was already a lot already there. But I will put one here on the title piece. I felt like the title card was sort of standing out as not looking pulled in with the rest of the page and adding that star helps that. I added one to that card with Sophie just up here where the where the journaling card meets the photo. Oops, I noticed something came off. You can't always trust those chipboard pieces to stay adhered. So <clears throat> good lesson there is to when in doubt just add some Tombow Mono multi adhesive. Shout out to my Patreon supporters. These folks help make this channel happen. So big thanks to all of them. Patrons get early ad-free access to all of my process videos and they also get real-time unedited versions of my videos as well as monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos of my room and my process. Thanks to you also for watching all the way to the end. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. Here's how this spread looks in my album with the flip ups flipped up. <laughs> this one was on the video before. So thanks so much for watching and I hope they have a really great scrappy week.